And my name's Brian Kelleher. Um, I was going to lead with a, a very big thank you to Macquarie University for the opportunity to talk, but putting me after Edwina, uh, I'm not so sure about that anymore. Um, but honestly, uh, thank you, uh, Vet, for the invitation. Um, uh, I come to uh, this presentation with a background in telecompetition policy, as James mentioned. Um, fairly dry, you might say. Uh, fairly torturous over the course of uh, the last decade. Um, I've been through the three NBN uh, uh, requests for proposals and uh, the ultimate establishment of NBN Co and then subsequently setting up universal service uh, uh, reform. Uh, for me, uh, while it mightn't be apparent to everyone in the room, uh, that's from a government perspective, puts us in a position to have some really practical, sensible, productive discussions about so we've got ICT, it's available in the marketplace, what are we going to do with it? And uh, there's a lot of things we're going to do with it, but if I can just talk from the perspective of telework, um, why is government particularly interested in telework? Uh, it's about productivity. Um, Australia has a challenge. Uh, our productivity is fairly stagnant. What are we going to do about it? Well. Uh, the great thing is the discussion is around what ICT can do for us. Um, we're in a fortunate, fortunate position where we have a new chair of the Productivity Commissioner. Productivity Commission actually saying, let's hold on a moment, we need to start revisiting this discussion and first and foremost is the role ICT can play in that. I guess it helps that uh, the new Productivity Commissioner, uh, the chair of the Commission is the former Secretary of the Department of Communications, uh, in a sense, he should say that, but uh, also in another sense, someone who's actually looked under the, bo under the bonnet of tell marketplace reform and has uh, recognised the opportunities, it's a great place for him to move to and it's really important that it's on the nation's agenda. Um, as uh, Yvette mentioned earlier uh, last week, uh, the National uh, digital economy strategy was updated. Uh, we have a number of priorities. Um, uh, I won't step through all of those for you, but increasing telework to 12% is one of those. Uh, and it was mentioned to me uh, this morning and it's been mentioned to me before, 12%, come on guys, get real. Um, in a sense, 12% perhaps under promise, over deliver, but more importantly, it's a number and it's on the government's agenda. And I think, again, relating back to the previous speakers, once it's on the agenda, then you can have some cultural change around how you actually approach this opportunity. If it's left to one side and it's just a, an issue of interest to those playing in the field and it doesn't become mainstream, is not on the corporate agenda, then action, cultural change, won't happen. So I think it's a real plus. So where are we in, in, in terms of putting it on the agenda? Well, we've got points like this making its way into the media now, that we've got to do something about the way we live, we've got to work cleverer, we've got to make use of this ICT. Um, again, I won't go through the whole quote for you. What are the benefits? The benefits... Uh, Yes, they've been demonstrated, numbers have been put against these. I'll repeat some numbers again this morning. Um, I don't think there's any harm in continuing to make the case and demonstrate the benefits. Putting numbers around things, quantifying things is really important. Um, when you have cultural change, people start seeing telework in the workplace, it's coming up, it is put on the agenda, you need the numbers beside it. That's where the traction comes. So we see a lot of change, uh, a lot of benefits across a range of fields. Um, what we're also seeing is uh, uh, changes for different parts of the community. For government, for public servants like me, our interest is not in the short term, our interest is in the long term. We've got some long term issues on the horizon and they're approaching and across the public service these are the points that we're wanting to grapple with the use of ICTs, the use of telework, 
or the integration of telework will be one of the strategies. And again, some moderation on, at least within the public service, when we talk telework, it's a strategy. Uh, I don't think anyone in the room would suggest it's a silver bullet. Some moderation of how we use it, how it connects in with other strategies is really important. Um, is the public service getting the message? It, it is. Uh, we're in a fortunate position of, of being able to um, uh, uh, take government to what's happening in the corporate space as well. We've got Medi, uh, Medibank saying there's 16% higher rate of retention through the use of telework. We've got the CBA saying there's 20% reduction in desk space requirements. I can't use my Cisco data point, that's already been taken, but I also have a, a couple of further ones. Microsoft is talking about accommodation uh, savings in the order of 25%. Um, uh, we've got uh, a government agency, the leader in terms of the, at least at the level, IP Australia, saying it's solved its uh, 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 investment problem in its workforce, i.e. skilling a lot of very trained, uh, highly skilled uh, uh, patents examiners, trademarks examiners and design uh, examiners and then losing them. Uh, the introduction of telework is one way of keeping those staff in your organisation. Um, just conscious of time, I'll step to what we're doing in, in terms of government action. Uh, the government commissioned uh, is, is doing a number of things and hopefully you're aware, aware of telework.gov.au and uh, the material uh, on that site to support uh, 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 engagement with, I think in the first instance, it's been engagement with this idea of telework. Uh, we're looking to move that forward and I'll touch on that briefly shortly. Uh, but in, just in terms of engagement with uh, uh, telework, we commissioned Deloitte uh, recently to do a return on investment tool and we're updating that at the moment. And that's essentially a tool where business can go plug in their details about their workforce and then uh, model what benefits in terms of dollars that they can ex uh, expect to see when they introduce a certain amount of uh, telework into the organisation. Uh, for just a case in point, for a 400 person organisation making, uh, making use of reasonable estimates of utility costs and the like, uh, if the organisation enabled half of its staff to telework three days a week, it would save around one point, uh, uh, let's just round it out, one million dollars after five years. So tools like that uh, uh, we see as an important uh, mechanism to engage uh, people in terms of the opportunity. Um, what's another uh, uh, key mechanism? Well, last year it was a telework week and that was engagement. Um, I think notwithstanding that the government is committed to continue with a national telework week, and that's a great thing because putting it on the radar, giving it prominence in one week is, is a very viable, useful strategy. We're transitioning from the week. The week will be a highlight. Activities like this, I think, go to point that it's now a week-by-week -week exercise, continuing to put telework on the agenda and discuss its benefits. Um, engagement was one of the angles I suggested about National Telework Week. The second angle is not just the why you should be interested, it's then how you pick it up and run with it. So this upcoming uh, uh, week will be more about here's some tools for how you can make use of telework in your organisation. Uh, we've done some research. Um, uh, that's available on the website. I won't go uh, into that in any great detail. This is what I'm particularly interested in. Uh, for me, this is what drives cultural change. This is getting management at a corporate level within the APS to sit down and engage with what telework means for each of the agencies. Um, so we have seven agencies that are part of the trial. Uh, we've got some heavy hitters in terms of their clout in a policy sense. So we've got Treasury. 
uh, we've got some heavy hitters in terms of the number of public servants involved in some of these agencies. We've got the ABS, the ATO, we've got immigration involved, uh, we've got the Department of Employment, which is great, uh, Department of Broadband, of course, we have to be there. Um, uh, we also have uh, two other agencies that haven't signed up to put their people on the trial. They're sitting and watching us and cracking the whip, you might say. That's the Department of Prime Minister and the Cabinet and the APSC, the Public Service Commission. Uh, they have buy-in. Uh, again, Edwina mentioned people getting buy-in. Well, two of the biggest corporate agencies for the public service are fully invested in this trial. So the trial commenced onboarding people in April. The, that onboarding uh, process will conclude shortly, will run for a minimum of six months and then report to government early in the new year. Um, already agencies are on notice that they'll have to respond to uh, issues such as how many, uh, what positions, or I should correct that, what positions can't be teleworked? Give us a reason for why you can't telework each of the positions in your agencies. On the back of that, this report will come out and say, here are our learnings. This is what we've found out about introducing telework into the APS. Quite an interesting beast. What are the early learnings? Well, it's early days, but one thing I'll touch on is corporate sponsorship, the secretaries of the departments buy in. The second point I'd raise very practical is when we bring staff to telework, we don't sit down with the staff member and say, this is what you're doing, off you go, enjoy the trial. It's the staff member, it's HR, it's IT, it's their manager, it's their co-workers, it's the project sponsor, all sitting down, going through the skills, establishing protocols, very productive, revisiting after a couple of weeks, how's it going, revisiting again. That's at the corporate level. Across the agencies, we're sitting down regularly, face to face, I know we should be doing it virtually, face to face with HR and IT in the same room with the project sponsors, getting some buy-in. And the reports, the reports go straight to the secretaries of the agencies. A lot of visibility, a lot of buy-in. I'll skip through the presentation. I think it would really blow me out if I did that. Engagement and facilitation. Um, uh, our hats go off to uh, all of our telework partners. Uh, they're out there spreading the message, gathering data, engaging in research. Uh, Barbara, who's in the room, and if you haven't met, um, uh, uh, I'll introduce you in coffee breaks, is someone you need to get in touch with if you have any interest at all in telework and research. Barbara drives a lot of our partnership networks. We've established four, really about joining people together, finding key topics of interest and moving from just the why is this important to putting some numbers around it and then how do you go about addressing these issues? And the how is so important from a policy perspective. Once you've got engagement, you want to say, well, these are your options for how to address it. Another big quote, but importantly, who's saying it? A former chair of, uh, a former secretary of the uh, Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Um, it was on the radar then, it's on the radar now. We're putting some money into it as well. Um, again, uh, details on our, our website, but government's actually, through these programs, saying, let's put some money into giving some. Uh, collateral to develop skills about how you introduce telework. Um, we're doing a few things in National Telework Week. If you're not a, already uh, part of the partner network, um, uh, we'd like to find out why not and make you one. Uh, we'll be sending out more and more information in the lead up to Telework Week later this, uh, later this year. Uh, we're going to be concentrating on a number of things, mainly, mainly about how you take this into your workplace from several angles. What are, what are the issues, challenges that need to be overcome? What skills then people need to have to overcome them? 
well? Um, all pretty good questions, all really important. Uh, hopefully we're going to uh, hear a lot about that today, uh, the answers to these questions. And uh, there I am, uh, Nina's uh, back in Canberra, Barbara's in the room, uh, please look us up, uh, we'd love to have a chat. Yvette, again, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Thank you, everyone.